by said we walk by faith and not by sight. See, this is a call that Jesus himself echoed into the ears of those he called as he walked along the sea. So come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Where are we going? Just come, follow me. I have no idea. Where are we going, Jesus? Just come, follow me, and I will show you as you go along the way. See, discipleship is merely about fellowship. And it's impossible to be a disciple without following. Now let me make a claim. Because all of us are disciples of somebody. We have all been shaped and influenced by somebody in our lives. And we have patterned or been molded by that particular individual. And whether it's consciously or subconsciously, we have found ourselves following in the footsteps of those who have made a lasting impression on our lives. Don't say they're making me like crazy, y'all. See, every unknown step, every unknown territory, every unknown situation, every unknown revelation and discovery will only be successful if we follow the leader. Let's get the story. Joshua's story for us highlights the reality of what it means to travel into the unknown. Joshua, who's now the subsequent leader post Moses, for all of you all who were here on Tuesday, we wrestled with the idea that Moses is now dead. That, that past paradigm that you identified faith with, Joshua, is no longer alive. That the one that you thought represented faith is no longer with you. Now you've got to learn how to live faith, not based upon how somebody else lived, but now live faith based upon how I'm working in your life. Moses is now dead. Joshua is now being called to lead the people. And Joshua finds himself having to embrace the responsibility that God had now ushered him into. The Jordan River was the barrier that stood between their present and their promise, Sheila. The Jordan River was the barrier that stood between their current and their future. The Jordan River was the barrier that stood between their real and their ideal. The Jordan River was the litmus test that would determine the commitment that Joshua and the people had to God's promise over their lives. It was a litmus test because it was the obstacle. Here it is. It was the obstacle that would do one of two things. It would either affirm their faith or it would delegitimize their faith. Just tap your neighbor real quick and say, it's going to be tight right there. Right, right. See, and it needs to mention it for all of us in the room right along from here, that every believer will have an obstacle in your journey of faith that is designed to do one of two things. That obstacle will either affirm your faith or it's going to delegitimize your faith. Joshua and the people of God have now arrived at the banks of the Jordan River. And God informs them of their newfound reality. Look at verse 4 again. It says, since you have never traveled this way before. In other words, you have never been in a spot quite like this. I would ask you today, have you ever found yourself in a spot? And when you've never been before, you've been in a situation where you've never seen before, you face a crisis that you've never had before, you have to deal with a problem that you've never looked at a day in your life before. He says, you have never been this way before. And since you have never been this way before, you've got to keep your eyes on the priest that's going out in front of you. They will guide you. Stay about a half a mile behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the heart. And make sure you do not come any closer than what I told you. They were simply told to follow the leader. And in order to follow the leader, the first thing we've got to be clear about is that we have to be able to follow instruction. I, I thought I would have a great big holler right there, but I can't get that. Look, look at verse 4 again. It says, Since you have never traveled this way before, they being the priests carrying the ark will guide you. Stay about half a mile behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the ark. Make sure, listen, make sure you don't come any closer. The ark symbolized the presence of the living God in the midst of the people. And the people were now being instructed to keep a half a mile separation between themselves and the priests who were carrying the ark. Now, for some of us, this may seem insignificant. To others, it may be very dismissive. 
But the primary point behind the statement is that God wanted to quell any sense of impulsiveness from the people who were now facing something they never faced before. Y'all want to in the room. See, their crossing over the Jordan would not be something that they would accomplish in their own ability. They would get over the Jordan River simply because of what God was going to do in their lives. Come on, come here. See, following instructions from God will oftentimes put us in a holding pattern. And that's something that we all struggle with. I wish I had about five of y'all. He would testify. That's why I am right now, preacher. I can't stand to wait, and I can't wait no longer. They had waited years for this opportunity. And now they were closer than they had ever been before, Albert, but impulsiveness would not get them over the river. God help us. See, taking matters into their own hands would not get them over. They were forced to move according to the way that God had instructed for them to move. And how many of us can testify today, honestly, that we have sabotaged our own promise because we were too impulsive? And we got a hand of God. Amen. Amen. See, God not only had a plan for the larger community, but God also had a purpose for Joshua. God was going to use this particular moment right here to validate God's presence in the life of Joshua, which will ultimately solidify Joshua's standing in the presence of the people. Joshua had never led anybody before. And now God tells Joshua in verse 7, today I'm going to begin to make you a great leader. I ain't ever been a leader. How am I going to make me something I ain't ever been before? I'm going to make you a great leader in the eyes of all these Israelites. They will know that I am with you, Listen, just as I was with Moses. This was a two-fold purpose in this whole experience. God was using the moment to sanction Joshua's leadership role, and he was also using the moment to validate to the people that God was still with them. And every now and again, we need to be reminded on this thing called life when we face in situations that seemingly are impossible, that God is really still with us. That's why you have the peace go in front of you. And so they get, they get so far in front of you that you don't get confused as to where they are. Don't be able to say God is all out in front of you. Amen. See, this was a first time kind of moment that God was making in Joshua's life. And whenever you find yourself in a first time moment, the thing that you got to be clear about is always follow God's instruction. The problem, though, comes into play, Alan, is that in order to follow God's instructions, you have to first be in conversation with God. Amen. I'll take you to the Bible. Joshua tells the people what the Lord told him. And there can never be any following without first listening. Verse 7 opens by saying, the Lord told Joshua. After God told Joshua, we want Joshua to know, verse 9 says, then Joshua told the Israelites. Both the individual and the group had to first hear from God in order to move appropriately and accordingly to what God has purposed for their lives. And one of the primary reasons I dare suggest today that we are unable to move appropriately and accordingly with God is because we fail to have a little talk with Jesus. We fail to talk to God. Listen, their destiny rests in the hands of God. And only God could provide the means to get them to where God wanted to get them to. Say it again, so let's start in our way. Their destiny rested in the hands of God. And only God could provide them the means to get them to where they wanted to get to. See, journeying into the unknown demands following the instructions of God, regardless of how nonsensical they sound or how confusing they may be in your ear. Listen again to what God tells them. Give this command to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and stop right there. Now hold on to what he said. That don't make no sense. How is me stopping in a flooded river going to help me 
get across the river. God says, send the priests to the edge of the river and have them step into the overflowing Jordan. And I'm asking you saying, and then you sit back and you watch me work. Somebody got it, amen. See, he said, look, if, if you want to see a miracle, then I promise you, you're going to deliver. You do it the way I say do it. And then stop and watch me work. And that's a reminder for all of us in the room today that our opportunity to witness a miracle hinges on our ability to follow instruction. You and I, we cannot get ahead of God. Listen, especially in a situation that we've never been in before. And everybody has the right solution to get you out. But everybody's solution can't get you out. Everybody thinks they have the right answer. But everybody don't have the right answer. There's only one right answer. There's only one real solution. And that is found in Jesus Christ. That's what he said. I am the way. I am the way. Jordan River was 
some conviction that says God be for us. Who in the world can be with me? If God is on my side, it don't matter where I stand up again. And what the story does, the highlights for us the power that God displays in our lives when and if we move with a conviction that lies in harmony with our God. If you believe that God is able, then your movements ought to be movements of conviction. Despite what I'm looking at, I still believe God is able. If you believe that God can do the impossible, your movements ought to have a level of conviction that says, it don't matter what I stare at, I just believe that God is able to get out of my way. If you believe that God is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all the men in the world, Bible said, it was a hard season, and the Lord was overflowing the 